history of the Los Angeles area, let's start with the Native Americans who first inhabited the regions. But where did they come from? The most common theory of the origin of Native Americans states that they came to North America from Asia during the last ice age around 10,000 years ago. The theory suggests the climate at the time created a land bridge connecting Alaska with eastern Siberia. The evidence for this includes DNA evidence between Siberian people and Native Americans. Archaeological evidence includes stone tools found in North America that are like those found in Asia. But are there any alternative explanations? At the very least, not all evidence supports the theory. Scientists have found some native tribes have genetic markers that are found nowhere in Asia. An archaeological site in Monte Verde, Chile, appears to have been inhabited 12,800 years ago. Another site near Tallahassee, Florida, has been dated to 14,500 years ago. So perhaps we do not have a definite answer to the origins of Native Americans. Humanity itself appears to have originated in Africa between 300,000 and 200,000 years ago. So we must assume all other populations across Asia, Europe, Australia, and everywhere else was a result of migration. It is possible there were several migrations. Some of these came along the Bering Strait corridor, others perhaps from other directions. Who were the Native Americans who lived where present-day Los Angeles sits today? What was this tribe called? We are already in trouble. Most sources give their name as Gabrielino, which comes from the Mission San Gabriel Archangel, which was built in 1771. Obviously, this is not what the tribe called themselves. An 1846 American expedition gives the name as Keech, However, the same expedition found this name was not recognized by all Gabrielinos. In 1903, naturalist C. Hart Merriman reported interviewing Mrs. James Rosemeyer, a native woman whose maiden name was Narcisse Higuera. Mrs. Rosemeyer stated the name of the tribe was the Tongva. Besides Gabrielino, Tongva seems to be the most accepted name for the tribe. The Gabrielino language is partially lost, but there seems to have been several dialects. This might explain the different names being used. I will be using the term Gabrielino as it has been the most recognized. Understanding Gabrielino culture as it existed when the Spanish first came to California is frustratingly difficult. The Spanish colonizers actively tried to stamp out their culture, language, and religion. A great deal of archaeological data has been destroyed by the heavy development in Los Angeles over the last several centuries. For many years, the only people collecting material artifacts were essentially treasure hunters, who sold whatever they found to museums and private collectors. The incomplete or missing data about these artifacts means a great deal of valuable information is lost. Most of the detailed information of the Gabrielino were recorded long after initial contact with Europeans in 1542. The first detailed records of Gabrielino culture and religion stems from the work of Father Geronimo Bascana, who recorded his findings in 1822. Anthropologists did not begin studying the Gabrielino until the later 19th century. We should not assume Gabrielino culture remained frozen for several hundred years after European contact. Culture still lives, and to be alive is to be in a constant state of change. But we can assume there is some continuity from the past. The earliest evidence for a human presence in the Los Angeles area date to about 6,000 years ago. However, these were not the Gabrielino, but an earlier group. Where did the Gabrielino come from, and when did they arrive in California? The Gabrielino language is a member of the Uto Aztecan language family. Uto Aztecan languages are found in an area ranging from present day Utah to the area of present day northern Mexico. 
This was the center of the Aztec culture, hence the name Uto Aztecan. Dates vary tremendously as to when the Gabrielino first came to the Los Angeles Basin. These range from 2000 BC to 700 AD. This might be a case of gradual migration over time or several migrations. The Gabrielino population at the time of Spanish contact is also hard to estimate. Some numbers are about 5,000, about 50 settlements with an average population of 100. However, these estimates may be very low. They reflect the population after contact with Europeans. Some anthropologists have suggested pre-contact North America was much more densely populated than previously thought. The Gabrielino were first contacted in 1542, a few years after the Spanish conquered central Mexico. This 1542 expedition states the natives claimed they had already met the Spanish, although there is no record of who they might have met. The next contact was 1602, which means European diseases could have spread from tribe to tribe to the Gabrielino in the intervening years. This suggests the villages of 100 people could be the result of the spread of disease decimating the population. By some estimates, disease may have ultimately wiped out as much as 80 to 90% of the population. If the 5,000 Gabrielino were the survivors of an epidemic, the previous population may have been closer to 50,000. But keep in mind, these numbers are not accepted by all scholars. There are several reasons for the deadly nature of these epidemics. First, the natives had never encountered the diseases many Europeans had been exposed to as children. Secondly, Native Americans seem to have been genetically homogenous. This is possibly because the first Indians migrating to the Americans were a relatively small group, resulting in less genetic diversity given their population. This would mean if one person is susceptible to a disease, then nearly everyone in that community will be susceptible. The homeland of the Gibrielino include most of present-day Los Angeles County and Orange County. Imagine an area including the San Fernando Valley, then draw a line from the San Gabriel Mountains to Santa Monica, then go south to Laguna Beach, then east to San Bernardino. The Channel Islands also had Gabrielino communities, and Catalina Island was an important spiritual and economic center. Communities on the edge of the territory appear to have been mixed with other tribes, so there was no absolute border. That is the current understanding of their origins. What did the Gabrielino say about their own origins? There are two creation stories among them. One story is told by Gabrielino, who lived near the mountain regions. In this story, the sky and earth copulate and give birth to a being called a Wiut. Wiut created a race of animals who spoke like humans. These animals turned against Wiut and killed him. But without Wiut, the creatures could not feed themselves. Then a being called Chengechengench appeared, who created human beings. Chengich and Gench chose some of the humans to be shamans and taught them how to survive, as well as the customs and practices of the Gabrielino. Chengich and Gench then ascended to the sky. The coastal Gabrielino had a similar story. They say a being called Nakuma created the world, and Wiut was the leader of the people. Again, the people turned against Wiut and killed him. This time, a being called Atagen appeared, taught some people to be shamans and the culture of the Gabrielino. Chenge Ichengench also appears and gives additional knowledge to the Gabrielino. Are Atagen and Chenge Ichengench the same being? What is their relationship? We simply don't know.